the hardest parts of narcissistic abuse recovery is overcoming the feelings of shame, guilt, and self-blame. And this is why practicing extreme self-acceptance is so important to the recovery process. If you've been following my channel for a while, then you know that I take a spirit, soul, and body approach, meaning going to the gym without addressing mindsets isn't going to give you the lasting results that you're after, but neither will addressing your toxic beliefs without establishing those first from your true identity in your spirit. So practicing extreme self-acceptance has been shown to have significant effects on the brain and the body, which can help victims of narcissistic abuse heal and regain their sense of self. So what do I mean by extreme self-acceptance? Most of us understand self-acceptance as the act of acknowledging and accepting one's thoughts, feelings, and behaviors without judgment or criticism. And this involves accepting oneself as a whole, including one's flaws and imperfections. Most people, when they go through a traumatic experience like narcissistic abuse, they go to see a therapist or a licensed psychologist. And I'm all about going to therapy and using psychologists, but I have never seen traditional therapy methods work for the process of narcissistic abuse recovery. And this is an important part of why you need to understand how extreme self-acceptance works. So let me just explain that. In extreme self-acceptance, you find out who you truly are, not who your parents told you you were, not how you feel in this moment, not who the narcissist tried to label you as, but as who God created you to be originally. And from that starting point, from that place, you work forward and identify where toxic behaviors, traits, thoughts, et cetera, come in along your timeline of life. And obviously there's more detail than that, to this process, but I want to move on to the benefits of using this. And again, this is often something that's overlooked in traditional therapy. So studies have shown that practicing self-acceptance can have profound effects on your brain. For instance, research has found that practicing self-acceptance can increase the activity in the prefrontal cortex, the part of the brain that's responsible for cognitive control and decision-making. This increase in activity can lead to greater emotional regulation and the ability to make healthier decisions. This is crucial in order to break the biochemical part of the trauma bond. And another way that radical or extreme self-acceptance can impact the brain is by increasing activity in the anterior cingulate cortex, the region of the brain that is involved in regulating the emotional responses. So research found that practicing extreme self-acceptance can activate the ACC, which can help individuals regulate negative emotions such as shame and guilt, which again are common in victims of narcissistic abuse and are often the reasons why they not only stay in the relationship much longer than they should, but have a very difficult time getting over that relationship. So the activation of the ACC, the anterior cingulate cortex, can help people become more self-aware and more attuned to their true emotional states and why they are feeling those emotions, which allows them to better manage their emotional responses. Self-acceptance has also been found to impact the body in positive ways. So studies have found that practicing radical or extreme self-acceptance can lead to lower levels of the stress hormone cortisol, which is associated with chronic stress and anxiety. Practicing self-acceptance can also improve your sleep quality. It can boost your immune system. It can reduce inflammation. And all of these have significant impacts on your overall health and well-being. In addition to these benefits that I've already mentioned, Self-acceptance can also help victims of narcissistic abuse regain their sense of self-worth and their self-esteem. Victims of narcissistic abuse often struggle with feelings of shame and self-blame, which is very damaging, obviously, to their self-esteem. So practicing self-acceptance can help you let go of these negative self-perceptions and begin to see yourself in a more positive light. And this can also help you regain your sense of self-worth and then feel more confident in yourself and in your abilities, including the ability for you to make wise and healthy decisions for yourself and for your life, for your future. Shame and self-blame, which are two of the emotions that I mentioned before, develop whenever you are living something you know is contrary to who you truly are and who you were created to be. So by practicing self-acceptance, individuals can begin to recognize that the abuse was not their fault and that they are not to blame for the abuser's behavior. However, it is their responsibility to start moving on. I want to say that again, shame and self-blame develop whenever you are living something you know is contradictory to who you are truly created to be. You can see why radical self-acceptance 
can help you overcome these feelings almost instantaneously. When you identify where you have been settling and why you have been settling, it's easy to start correcting that path. Another benefit of practicing self-acceptance is that it can really help you establish healthy boundaries. Narcissistic abusers do not have boundaries. At every single opportunity, they are going to attempt to invade your personal space, your emotional, your physical, your mental space. And so by practicing self-acceptance, you are able to learn to recognize and honor your needs and your boundaries, which can help prevent further abuse and it will help you create healthy relationships, not only prevent unhealthy things, but help you establish healthy ones. Self-acceptance helps you develop self-compassion. And obviously, narcissistic abuse is incredibly tra traumatic. And you may be struggling right now, even with feelings of anger, resentment, and even self-hatred. So when you understand and you put into practice extreme self-acceptance, you can begin to cultivate a sense of self-compassion and kindness towards yourself. And this is a vital aspect of the healing process because it allows you to acknowledge and validate your own feelings and experiences and allows you to begin to recognize and appreciate your strengths and accomplishments, which again, rebuild your sense of self-worth. And it can also help you understand what traits, what characteristics about you drew the narcissist to you. Because oftentimes the narcissist chose the strongest things about you, the best things about you, and tried to tear those down or use them in a counterfeit way. So extreme self-acceptance also allows you to have a full picture of whatever has happened to you. And this is not to condone or to dismiss any type of behavior, the egregious behavior that was done to you and the things that you suffered. But this big picture perspective does allow you to see that if I'm going to blame this person for ruining my self-esteem, if I'm going to put the blame of where I am now in my life solely on the narcissist, and by that, I, it could be your financial situation. It could be why there's no peace in your house, why your children have discord amongst themselves or whatever. You also need to understand that the, the big picture says without the narcissist, you wouldn't have those children. Without the narcissist, you wouldn't even understand what type of abuse or what type of red flags you would need to look for in the future. You wouldn't understand your own worth. And now that you're outside of the situation, you wouldn't be able to go even more into the things that are great about you, your strengths, right? So in other words, if you put 100% of your focus onto all the terrible things that have happened to you while you have been with a narcissist or potentially your entire life because you were raised by a narcissist and you just went from one narcissistic relationship to the next, you will continuously allow those things to grow. You will be continuously feeding those thoughts, those emotions. Radical self-acceptance says, those things happened to me, but look what I turned them into. I took something ugly and I made something beautiful. I took something terrible and I turned it into something stunning. You were created to create. You were created in the image of God. And if you truly believe this, and if your faith says that all things work together for your good, then practicing radical acceptance is a great place to start transforming your current situation. If you want to learn how to do exactly what I'm talking about here and guarantee that you break the trauma bond, then apply to join my Narcissistic Detox Intensive by texting your first name and the word detox to 512-677-9322. And if you're outside the U.S., the directions to apply are in the description of this video, so check those out. Not everybody will qualify, but if you are in the top 5% of people who are truly ready to make a change and to take control over your lives, you want to take back control of your future, you want to prepare appropriately for court or turn your court case around, then this is for you. So I encourage you to apply right now. Practicing self-acceptance is a powerful tool for healing and for moving forward after narcissistic abuse. In fact, I'd say it's the most important part of your recovery journey. So by letting go of shame and self-blame, by establishing healthy boundaries, by cultivating self-compassion, by understanding how your brain and body work together, and developing a stronger sense of self-esteem, you can begin to rebuild your life, you can create a healthier, more fulfilling relationships in the future, and you can actually achieve every single one of your dreams. And if you're trying to parallel parent your rebellious teenager with a narcissist, then I want you to check out this video next in which I address that topic specifically.